So I'm gonna load the image and let's click on file. Uh, now, if you are loading a separate image, you can go um, open, but we want to actually import image sequence because what we have is a set of images. Uh, so we go import image sequence and it happens that I was fiddling around with it. So um, I've got it here, uh, but you have to just find the folder and you select one and go open and you automatically find out um, based on the files and file names that are there 57 in this folder. Um, and you can just go OK and it takes some time to load. Uh, and what it's done uh, is it's ordered by the file name. So first field is a bit funny there, uh, but it's, it's ordered, it's, it's loaded as an image stack rather than individual image. Now what's the, what the difference is, is that if I just open one image, this is it. You can put your names or not, but that, that's it. But if you import something of image sequence, You've got this bar down the bottom here. Mm. So you've all loaded all 500 images and you can tell how many images down you are. Uh, and you can, you can see the whole thing. It's much easier to navigate. And, um, no, it's a bone sample and I'm going to show you <laughs> in 3D. Uh, and you can do a whole bunch of stuff. So you can zoom in. Uh, you can you can change the contrast if you want to. Do. Uh, but one of the plugins under three D is called Three D Viewer. If I click on this, this window will pop up to say, "Oh, what do you want to visualize?" And mm -hmm. I'm going to keep this as a body, uh, but I'm going to change this resampling factor uh, from two, which is default to one. Okay. Now the resampling factor is a little bit like a blurring, so it resamples and makes it smooth. Uh, and the factor two will make it smooth, but make it a little bit blur, so I don't like that. Um, and then there it was, so it's done the 3D rendering. Mm -hmm. So what it's done is it's automatically kind of done a bit of a processing by itself. So that the black space outside of this original image is now a black background and it's transparent. Uh, and the gray object is, is can be visualized here. And you can rotate. It's wrong. You can you can sort of see the whole thing. So this is this is a sample mm -hmm. that was scanned for this data set. Uh, yes. Yeah. Now let's have a look a little bit more in detail about what this is. Um, so this bit here is a ear canal. One side we have the smooth tone bits here. So this is more on the medial side of the bone, uh, and this little or well, quite a large hole here. I think this is where your uh, cochlear vestibular nerve usually exits from. And then here, so if you find the ear canal and if you approach inside, uh, oops. A, yeah, that there's a round window here in the cochlea. So, so that's that's sort mm -hmm. of the size you're you're talking about. Oh, so that's the whole specimen. Um, but relative to the whole specimen, the cochlea is just this this internal bit, a small size. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what it is. Um, but as you can see, uh, once once we can find a few landmarks. Um, We'll be able to at least be able to see that where the round window is, uh, and all the mm -hmm. windows actually here, uh, relative to this bony ear canal. Is. Of course, it's missing the skin and the earlobe, so um, 
it would look a lot shorter than the actual thing. Mm. Um, but it's a, it's own data set we can work on. So again, that's the specimen that was scanned. Now, now if you have a look go back here, um, this end is probably this end. Oh, so, so we have, we've got a stack like that. And or maybe not. That's the fatty bit, and that's probably the ear canal there. And now you can start to see here. So, so this middle bit contains the cochlea. Now, in this cross section, um, number 260, so about in the middle, uh, we see this basal turn. Basal turn, middle turn, apex of the cochlea. Move up and down, up and down. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> see this effect too? Yeah. Now over here, it looks like the vestibular system here. So if I if I move this plane, this bit will connect into a one semicircular canal. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. So one can semicircular canal, uh, and, and, and there's two more. It's one thing, one can, one can, yeah. It's a new ground. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So that's same for the black now. And that connects up to the neutrophil, like it was a neutrophil there, and then it's copper in. So, um, mm. Mm. so that's what the sample is. And I guess the uh, use of this potential data set for, uh, for you, Grace, would be, would be to looking at the, um, the yeah. channel uh, and the cochlea. Uh, for you, Senorita, uh, this mm -hmm. is a human cochlea, uh, and that's got an inner ear fluid space in the, um, the outer shell. So if we can just... So you, you won't need this edgy piece, uh, but you might want this more of a um, cropped version. You can pop it. You might not even need the vestibular system. Um, now you've got a much smaller set. It's just a cochlea. Uh, and we want to make our cochlea phantom based on this fluid filled space. Uh. Mm. So this data set could be useful to for both of it. Um, Haruna, on the 3D image, yeah. could I see the orientation that it sits in again? So like what is Yeah. Um yeah. now before I go there, let me mm -hmm. just load up another program. Uh, so another program, uh, oh, and, uh, and it can do the same thing, so I might just uh, do that at the same time. So uh, mm -hmm. the other program I mis mentioned is the 3D uh, Slicer 4, uh, and um, it's, it's also a free software, and it's available for both, both Mac and PC. Uh, and um, it's a very, very useful tool. I think it's originally designed actually more for DICOM files or for MRI scan, mm -hmm. and that we can load any other, other time. So for this software, we go load data, and there's a bit of a like how to load the data of this type, uh, and we just go choose how to add. Now I've got these two two versions here, and I've just added the new version in the Dropbox too. So one is a BMP file, and the other one is a TIFF file, so it's a different type mm -hmm. format. And, uh, so you find your folder, you select one of the images and click open and this thing will show up. Now you have to click on show options which opens up a whole range of more options. Uh, description should be volume and if you have a spot over there you'll see a much less. 
And what you want to remove is this tick here. Mm -hmm. So uh, currently it's ticked on single file, so only load a single file. If you untick this, it will actually load the whole set, which is what we want to do. So I'm going to untick it and go OK. should take some time. Yes. There you go. So it's loaded. Uh, now how it looks is it's got a different menus on this bar here and then it can do so many things. Um, got a big 3D window uh, and three different orientation cross sections at the same time now. Uh, which is very handy, but you can change your layout in whatever way you want. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't need it, you can just, just turn off uh, one or the other. Uh, so, so this is one orientation, same as what we were looking at before, uh, but it's you can it's also um, showing a different cross-section view. Mm -hmm. Here and there. And this one's a really nice, nice funky view. You can see that the two. Um, well, if I go to volume rendering, that's where um, the volume will be rendered here in the middle. Uh, and um, it's, it's by default uh, not visible because it consumes a lot of PC power. Uh, but I can turn it off. Connecting to center it. Then it's, it's sort of done it for you mm -hmm. um, by default. Uh, now, because it's a clinical tool, um, and it's got a few different default setup of pseudo coloring and selecting segmentation for visualization. You can you can try. <laughs> so for some of the MRI images, some of them could be just mm -hmm. spot on, um, and but just uh, the, you know you can generate some beautiful, beautiful three D rendering. Just using this tool, and there's a few few different things that you can you can do if you want to adjust the transparency or colors. Okay, so now you want to do another orientation. Mm. Mm. Now I think uh, this is... To the right of the yeah? Okay. Yeah. Let's get that around the window there. Cool. Mm. And I think over here is our oval window. Yeah. Sorry, that's the wrong one. Left here. Round round is this one. Round window is this one. Mm -hmm. Oval window. Um, so Haroon, I don't know for the uh, the phantom model. Yeah. Um, so would I just look at like the starter set for like um how we would like design it and then like get like approximate measurements from data sets on like from different articles? Yeah, I think we should do both. Um, but um, what I was hoping to show you is the image today. So with this guy, um, we can actually. Um, now, let me figure out how to do that. Uh, so first of all, uh, it can do a lot of 
what's this thing? So for example, we can threshold it. Um, that background, no, I don't want that background. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to select the fluid compartment because that's what we want for our, you know, uh, the cochlear model. We mm -hmm. want to know how the fluid space goes. What I've done is that based on that image, I've just made this this white thing. Yeah. Mm. And I've got the I don't want this surrounding it. So I have... and all of this. Hang on a second. Do it again. So I've just did a rough clean. Mm -hmm. But, but you see what I'm trying to do? Yeah. So I was trying to segment out the inside. But from the original image, I've got this turn now mm. information. So so I think um this is what we can probably do. We can clean this image. It's, it's looking funny because it's got these extra bits that's very white. Um, but we can make this part based on this image. Yeah. Uh, and um, add, add a few things in the pit if we wanted to. So, so this, this image itself can be a starting point in terms of having that shape. Mm. For the cochlear phantom is um, what I'm hoping to do. Um, that maybe we can do. I don't know what I'm going to use now. I'm going to do that. Yeah, so that's what, that's the first one that's in there. And I think I also put the sheep cochlea. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just the cochlea without the ear canal. Um, but I think this one is probably easier to in the initial instance to look at. Uh, and just so that you can um, learn a little bit more about what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. We can do the same thing here. So if we import image sequence to image J, um, and there's a menu, menu uh, menus under stack, 
so we can go to um, Osogono view, which does the same thing. So, so we can cross cut a cross section through. So this line cross section view is over here, and this line cross section view is over here, uh, and uh, we got this different uh, scale. So coming down, we can. Uh, If we focus on the other scene, let's put the view across here mm -hmm. uh, and across here on this side. So that's what's been added to the inventory <laughs> uh, so i suggest you um uh, see see if you can open the file in the first place mm. and um having a look uh would give you a bit more i guess um, like a different different uh, perspective uh, because this is a real sort of 3d data set rather than that you know 2d diagram that you might be able to find um, and just having a play on the software uh, and get used to it or oh, 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 um, it'll be something nice to do mm. uh, now you can do a lot of different things so you can for example resize the images if you wanted to or you can crop uh, so um, in your case Senorita if you wanted to just look at the copy of it um, what you can do is you can you can select the region so there's a various region selection tool here mm. um, and you might just want to really just limit the box to here. make sure I don't miss anything have just cropped the whole whole image stack yeah and then you can say this as image sequence and if you if you select the folder and save this uh, it will save as a whole different um completely new image stack uh, so it will add a digit another set of 500 images that's been cropped just for the cochlea yeah. the new and smaller data set yeah so that's just um that's it from me for my end <laughs> for now <laughs> sorry 